everything comes to life everything dies right continuing with this argument go by the principle of induction did life herself come to life did she ever die can death have a life Do you know who we are? What we are? I I don't know who you are. I can never know who you are. I I know who you will be, but I don't know who you are now. And and you sir? Me. Do you know anything? Me? Uh, I don't know anything. Do I know something? Yes, I do. Just a second. Um. Oh yes, here it is. What? You are set beings like us. You, sir. You're Mr. Death. And you, pretty lady. You're Miss Life. And you, it's boy. You are. Huh? There is no name written here. You may choose one for yourself. Who are they? Uh, uh, well, it is written here that you three are the trinity of truth. And these. Uh, definitions. Definitions? What do you mean by definitions? Well, well we, we don't know, sir. sir. We, we have told you everything, everything we have down here. here. It is time for us to go. Go where? Nowhere, Nowhere and everywhere. everywhere. But you haven't told us what you guys are called. <laughs> it, it is, is funny, funny you ask that. See? See? This, this is, is the first time, time we meet we someone, someone else. else. So, so, we didn't have a name. But, but we decided, if someday, if someday there is someone, they will call us time. time. I am the past. And I am the future. And I am the present. Oh, who are you? Well, hello, sir. Are you having a good morning today? Uh, yes, I... Uh, by the way, do you work here? No, sir, I'm here for a meeting. Oh, well, I'm really sorry. I don't recall having made any appointments. I'm not here to meet you. And what the hell are you doing in my office? What is your name? <laughs> Didn't you know who I was when you walked into my office? You really are overestimating my interest in you. But come on, humor me for a while. Tell me your name. Ishwar. Huh. Ishwar. I wish it wasn't. I hope you're nothing like your name. Excuse me, what? <sighs> Never mind. I just have this tendency of fleeting into my memories. You know how it is. You hear a name and you start associating the qualities of this person with the person you just met. <sighs> it's a little unfair, but... What is it? Yes, you are right. So, uh, tell me, are you a salesman or are you here for a survey? You are quite intuitive, sir. I am here on a survey. An investigation on the nature of death. You see, I'm really curious so as to what people do in the face of death. <sighs> wow. uh, are you like a writer or something? No, sir. I think of myself more of an Editor of sorts. 
Mm. I have this grand script in my mind and I'm just so confused about which characters to keep and which ones to edit out. It's a really tough job, so I kindly request you cooperate. You see, I'm just doing my job. Yes, yes, sure, man. See, I have deep admiration for art, so ask me whatever you want to. Brilliant. So, Ishwa, are you married? Yes, I am, and I have a four-year-old daughter. That's nice. Is your wife really beautiful? Yes, she is, but not as she used to be. Hmm? You know, beauty is a very convoluted thing. A thing of beauty is expected to be composed of that beauty perennially. <laughs> but that doesn't really happen. It gets lost. And then you think, what if you have just lost the ability to see it? Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Describe for me a time when you thought she was beautiful. <laughs> is that really a part of your job? It is an extensive survey. Uh, okay, fine. See, I don't know if you'll get this, and you, you might think it, if, if it uh, to be a bit silly, but uh, it was a sneeze. <laughs> a sneeze? Yes. Um, I was sitting in the library, and I had this copy of Catch in the Rye in my hand. I was heading for the checkout desk when and I suddenly feel this huge burst of energy at the side of me. And there she was, dressed in a kurti and jeans. She had those, you know, round frames like John Lennon's. However, it is the book in her hand that really defined her. And which book was that? It was a copy of The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky. She was heading for the checkout desk when Suddenly, this grand sneeze built up in her hair and she burgled it all on the book. Her eyes turned to water. She flipped her hair on her face to hide away the tears. I almost smiled. Then she turns to me and she says, with a puppy like helplessness, Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that is beautiful. Yes. So, you tell me, have you ever been in love? I mean, you are an artist. You must have a muse. Come on, what was your moment? Well, she wasn't my muse. I was hers. She was a writer and I fell in love with her while she was making her compositions. I, I can't get into details. It's a little hard for me. It's, it's okay, I understand. I'm sorry. So. Uh, Anyways, get, get, go ahead with your survey, I'm getting a bit late. Oh, of course. Just one last thing. I need you to play this memory in your head one last time. I want to note certain responses. So just close your eyes and think about that moment. Uh, okay, this is some survey you're doing. Fine, let's do this. Where are you now? I see the sky blue cover of the brothers Karamazov. I see her eyes turn to water, her hair flowing over her face. And she turns to me and she says, Oh, I'm sorry. Now, hold on to that image, you sure? Don't let it go. Don't let it go. Don't let it go, Ishwar. Hold on to that. Hold on to that image, Ishwar. I'm begging you, Ishwar. Don't you let it go. Don't let it go, Ishwar. Don't let it go. Well, hello there. Can 
It's all right. Don't touch me. It's okay. It's the only way. Why? I don't want to meet this way. I know. I know. I know. I know. I don't know. I haven't seen him since. Does he still have that stupid name? Yes. He has cults following now too. Must be very proud of himself. Or very lonely. Do you remember how it all started? How can I ever forget? I am the past. And I am the future. And I am the present. Life. Chances upon a sunflower one day and instinctively reaches for brimming with hope and glowing with electric energy. She hands the flower over to one of the statues and it bursts to life. this excitement, she creates a number of new lives. Awestruck by life's extraordinary ability to create, picks up a flower himself. And with all sincerity, presents it to a newborn. But to his utter horror, it drops cold dead. curiosity and after they have left he ventures out for his own trial he takes the sunflower from one of life's creations he comes across death's failed experiment for life from one to another being. Well, why are you kneeling? You have brought us back from nothingness. You are our creator. Our genesis, our salvation. This, this gives me power over you? Oh yes it does father. You have created us. Is, is this a feeling? What is this? Is it something objective? Do I own this or will this pass? What do you think? This, this feeling is strange to me. I have created these beings, yes, but I, I didn't expect them to sire down to me like this. 
This feels exhilarating. This is far. Those fools, life and death. <laughs> they have no idea the kind of strength they possess. But, but make no mistake, I am no fool. I have a plan. An ambition to become even more powerful. <laughs> Power. Child, tell me. How do you feel? I have a strange sensation inside me. I feel jealous of everything around me. I feel jealous of my brother's strength. I feel jealous of her beauty. Forgive me, Father. For I feel jealous even of you. My son, don't apologize. You will be the definition of his dissatisfaction. You will fill the void of the world with disappointment. You will be envy. Yes, my father. I will creep into the minds of creatures you will create. Not just into their minds, but also in their worlds. Until they forget what happiness even means. <laughs> yes. You, my child, how do you feel? Ah, uh, uh, my head is spinning with, with madness. I want to destroy with chaos. I want to go absolutely berserk. You tell me, father, what do I do? You do, you do exactly what you are meant to. You wreak destruction and chaos wherever you go. You. <laughs> You will be my lunatic. Oh, yes, my father. Yes. You see, madness is the code and this, this world is written. And that is what this world will learn. So... <laughs> my dear. I am the purest form of desire. <laughs> I can, I can feel this thing inside me that just won't go, doesn't want to consume. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> you will be the essence of my world. You lust. You will be what these trivial creatures desire, but can never attain. what my purpose is. I already know what you desire. And I'll make sure that your desires come true no matter what. Yes. <laughs> my children, my sacrificial lambs, you will be the critical cogs in the machine that I now plan to build. You will be the defining components but you're not enough. Go, go and fetch time. I need to talk to present. Present? My dear present. How well do you bowl? Um, well, okay, I guess. I don't really know. Uh, too busy or rather too confused to understand. I live in perpetual melancholy. And I live in perpetual pleasure. <laughs> Did I say anything to you both? <laughs> I was talking to Mr. Present over here. I think that was evident. Uh, yes. Uh, Present, how do you feel about the proposal? Uh, what proposal? About joining me. Joining you? In what? I 
I want you to join me in my bar of absolution. I will have the bar, but you will have the reins. In the world that I am now about to create, you, you would be the watchful manager. And I would have all the power. But, but why? Isn't this enough? <laughs> you really think all this is enough? Wandering about this wasteland without any sense of purpose or meaning? I will create meaning if I cannot have any. And if I refuse? <laughs> refuse? They'll lose you pretty playmates. You will go around traversing alone like this. You leave me no other choice, Mr. God. Uh, okay, uh, tell me what I should do. Nothing for now. Just, just keep a watch over everything. We will meet again soon. Life and death had succumbed to a cosmic chemistry. What can such a relationship lead to? Seems almost mad, yet beautiful. Death and life, forming a bond under the sparks of love. It is so vast and extensive. What is? Nothingness. Emptiness. Hmm. Yes. Somehow this emptiness has succeeded in drowning us. We are insignificant compared to this vast nothingness and meaninglessness. Perhaps you are right, Death, but I think this nothingness exists by default. What if it can be complemented? I don't understand. You mean we can erase all of this emptiness? No, we can't erase it. We can never erase something that isn't there in the first place. What I mean is, maybe we can fill this nothingness. Perhaps we won't feel so insignificant? <laughs> then that's entirely up to you. You're the one bestowed with the power of creation. I can never create anything. I only undo what you do. You don't get anything, do you? Hmm? What do you think your power means? I think of it more as a curse. You fool! You paved the way for a renewed creation. See, even creation itself can become corrupt, but suppose it is doomed to stay in that state forever. It can never renew. It cannot have another chance. But you, you are there to give it that chance. So you mean that I undo all of your hard work just so you can do it again. Precisely. But then that's not so bad, is it? But the question becomes, how do I know when someone's time has come? Well, I'm afraid I can't help you there. It's entirely up to you who to spare and who to not. I, I can spare something for love. Love? You're the one bestowed with the power of creation. You tell me.
When I look at life, I become near to joy of creation. For her, I'm the time and toil spent in crafting shapes and the quality she breathes in, the being she creates. However, when I look at Mr. Death, I become a longing, a longing for a purpose, a meaning for his existence. However, I think he understood the meaning now, but I guess he would rather have me talk about it. And how is that? Okay, since you asked, would you kill me if you wanted to? <laughs> Keep talking like this and I will kill you right now. No! Why don't you go ahead, Mr. Death? No! Stop! No! No! no. Present. What do you have to report? Uh, Mr. God, there is something called love that life and death have created. I don't really understand what it is, but it is happening. And they both seem to be pretty moved by her. What is love? What is this nonsense? I know of no such thing. Well, to me, she seemed really beautiful. Really? Yes, Mr. Bob. Let's go see who this love is. Ah! Oh. So you are who they have named love? Yes, I am. <laughs> Very good. What are you? You don't have place for love. You fill with a hunger I cannot put my finger on. You felt alone and destroyed for so long that you can't even grasp the sense of loving something. Okay, how do you know all this? You do not understand, Mr. God. This hunger is not going to go away by the power you crave. It will make you hollow. It's absurd, Mr. God. Your plan is absurd. You are just a definition. You are an absurd definition. You can be destroyed. You have no power to stop my plans. <laughs> oh, you poor being. I do not have any parts, Mr. God. I don't want any of it. God, this is love. Isn't she beautiful? She sure is something. Who's there? Oh! Death, you made it! What did you want to talk about? Uh, there's no hurry. Sit! You wanted to talk. Talk. Okay. I have a plan. Huh. What plan? Domination. <laughs> Mr. God, there are just the three of us. Others are mere definitions. Who would you want to dominate? See, this is my point. We, we've been given all this power and we don't have anything to do with it. No universes to conquer, no worlds to save. We, we are it. So, so I suggest we create something, rule over it and become gods. <laughs> you are so over your head. But come on, amuse me a while. 
how would you become this so called god you don't even have the power to create you're just a cook a cook who can work with his ingredients you're no creator when the plan was light creates you destroy and i would decide who dies and who gets to live oh so life becomes the mothership you become its pilot and i am the bloody janitor no mr death you don't understand it's a love is this love that you have spared for life clouding your senses then your plan is stupid love has nothing to do with this <laughs> well this is just plan a and if you don't comply i have a plan b and you will not like it so i suggest you sleep on this offer make your plans mr god do what amuses you huh all right then plan b it is last bring in those three buffoons and yes 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 call everyone to a grand party just invite death a little late he's a party pooper anyway Wait for time. Um, uh, Mr. God, you called for me. Yes, I did call for you. First of all, congratulations. Due to the utter rejection of my plan A by death, we are moving forward with my plan B. And you, you're really important to it. Uh, how so? Uh, you will come to know in a while. Last would you please do the honors What is it wrong for See The thing is you are really powerful being You control the flow of universe Yes So So Mr God cannot allow you to roam around in this rampant haphazard map that is just too bad for his plan You see we need you all contained we can't let you all crazy Mr God you can't do this to us You said I was going to be important in the world you're about to create Oh, you are really important. In the world that I'm about to create, you mark the boundaries of it. But I cannot let you go free. I need to linearize you. I need you in my control. You can't do this to us. Let, let us be. You can't, can't contain, contain us. Oh, but I am. Welcome. Can I have your attention, please? What's the occasion, God? Oh, today, today is my coronation. I am going to be named king. King. King of what? Well, all of you, of course. And you could be my queen. God, you fool! Are you still on with that nonsense? life let's go wait and kneel what i said wait and kneel you really think these mere definitions can stop me <laughs> you want to see what they can do You know what to do. <laughs> Neil, my dear, or that beautiful rosy love is next. <laughs> Ah 
I asked you to join me, my brother. But you had to act all big, all big, and spare love for life. Spare love for life while I just wander alone. So, so I devised a plan. And lucky you, this plan is going to take place right in front of your eyes. And you will be the sole audience of the first ever magic show. Bring those idiots in. <laughs> Look at them. They're dead. Look at them. To create an ordered world, I had to bring these three together first. And that problem was easy to solve. And what does this world of yours consist of? Just you? Oh, I am so glad you asked this question. So glad. See, I have a plan for a being termed the human. There will be dim-witted creatures filled with all the definitions that I have crafted out of your creations. They will populate my world. You fool! Do I need to remind you again and again that you don't have the power to create? <laughs> this is where your precious life comes in. See, I, I cannot create, yes, but I can always transform. So your life here will be broken down into pieces and trapped into all these humans. And once they have life within them, I don't have to do anything. They will create more of themselves. You won't dare. Well, watch me. And just because you said I won't dare, I'm going to break love too. <laughs> no! Not yet, not. an orphan. Where are you going now, Death? You have nowhere to go. I am the destructor. I'm going to kill your humans one by one. It is futile. My humans are like viruses. They will multiply. It is of no use. Still, it's worth it. At least this way I see a glimpse of her every time I destroy. I will have a purpose now. A meaning. I can do this forever. And the funny thing is, I have forever. Your time can't run me out, God. The question is, what purpose do you have now? You've destroyed us. Your humans have made their own world. What will you do now? Alone in this palace of yours.
How can I ever forget? It is time for me to go. I'm perpetually bound to human beings now. No matter how many you destroy, you could never piece me back together. I would tell you to stop, but I know it is of no use. You remember? once told me that the very purpose of my existence comes from the fact that I give way for new creations. I'm only following your words, else everything becomes empty again. Well, hello, sir. Are you having a good morning today? I, I would like to say a word for the audience. Uh, thank you for being so patient. Really great audience. Here, have a clap for yourself. Uh, Shashwat Khare being a fifth year, right? Being a fifth year, right? He did not get placed yet, but still he came and helped with the play. He did not. We had to we had to choreograph each scene, construct every dialogue so that it fits the stage. And Shashwat Khare deserves a lot of credit. And also, it should not be taken away that Himan Shurai has done a wonderful job with the script. I can ask him to come onto the stage, but he will not. Shy person, but that's okay. Uh, thank you, LSD. First of all, without you, the play won't happen. Dove for shooting our video. Dopey for the amazing pictures that you always come out with. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Dosh, because you are amazing.